Good evening from beautiful Brisbane, Australia. How are you? And I can't say how are you this morning because it's evening here. I decided to jump in on Sunday night because last week, as one of my admins said, was like a week of Mondays every day and we were so full on. But first of all, how are you? And let me know how you're going in the box down below. And also, if you have any questions or comments, always feel welcome to leave them because I'm more than happy to answer them to the best of my ability. And remember to like, share, subscribe, to receive notifications because there are millions of people out in this world who are yet to work out or discover or be diagnosed that they've got complex PTSD. And the more information that we can get out there, the easier it is for other people and we're not even down to the stage of our families being able to talk with us competently about our mental health. So we need to be part of the new generation who build a community that not only helps us but we help other people. Okay, now hello beautiful Alison. Alison's in Ireland where they're going through a second shutdown. So I feel very blessed that in Brisbane, we walk around like COVID didn't happen, except that we're aware that we need to, you know, use wash our hands, etc., etc., take good care of each other, and, you know, if you're sick, stay home. It's pretty simple. So we don't have masks. Our children don't wear masks to school. We don't have to live in masks or anything like that. Uh, we did really hard yards back in March to May, I think it was. And ever since then, our government's been on the ball with as soon as someone's diagnosed, they get on it and they do contract tracing. Contact? Contact. Contract sounds like they're a hitman. <laughs> they're not. They uh, do contract. <laughs> that's really hard contact tracing so they trace it all the way back to make sure they get everybody who may or may not have been infected and get people get treated and so we live a relatively free life here okay good morning beautiful Rachel well yeah yeah actually it was probably is your morning okay so today I want to do two things all right. Now, this is really, really important stuff because, one, I've never read it and, you know, when you work with me, it's all practical. And, two, as I've worked through all this overwhelm, it's just blown my mind how subtle it is. Okay. So now I'm going to read you a list out of the symptoms of overwhelm and I want you to keep a track of how many you can identify uh, that are happening for you as I read them out. And then the second thing I'm going to do is explain how subtle they are in that the ones that you've recognised, you might have ones that you may recognise after I've read the list out. This is how subtle it is. And then I'm going to give you information around what I've been doing to help with the subtleness of the symptoms of overwhelm, okay? So here we go, the symptoms, you ready? <laughs> you got your fingers ready to count? Becoming easily agitated, frustrated and moody. Feeling like you are losing control or need to take control. Having difficulty relaxing, <laughs> relaxing, <laughs> relaxing and quieting your mind so you can't turn off the mind chatter and don't we all know what that's like when we go to bed? Feeling bad about yourself, so it could be low self-esteem, lonely, worthless and depressed. And boy, hasn't that come out during 2020. Avoiding connection with other adults. Low energy, headaches, upset stomach, including diarrhea, constipation and nausea. Aches, pains and tense muscles, chest pain and rapid heartbeat. Insomnia. Frequent colds and infections, nervousness and shaking, cold or sweaty hands and feet, dry mouth and difficulty swallowing, clenched jaw and grinding teeth, breath holding, constant worrying, racing thoughts, forgetfulness and disorganisation, inability to focus, poor judgement, being pessimistic or seeing only the negative side, Changes in appetite, either not eating or eating too much, 
procrastinating and avoiding responsibilities, increased use of alcohol, drugs or cigarettes. So anything that's, you know, unhealthy really. <laughs> okay, so what was your score? Did you manage to keep score? There's about 17 on the list. And I can tell you when I first, I did this list up last week and it was for a blog post actually to do with parenting. So if you're going to look at the latest blog post, it's actually got all of this information in there for you. So you can actually go through and do a tick off checklist as well if you need. <laughs> Rachel said she lost count. Yeah, me too. <laughs> but here's the thing. It's really, really subtle. So it's like I found out last week. So I'm at this, in this advanced stage of recovery where I'm now going out, I'm connecting with people that I haven't previously known uh, in real life and online as well. I'm moving into doing uh, greater things with my work, which means change. So look at if there's change in your life as well. Uh, connections so you're looking at greater connections and you you know you're feeling good about your recovery you've been doing really well and next thing you know you're sidelined and you you're going what's going on now last Monday morning I woke up and I literally knew that I'd been triggered at the brain neurological level at the brain because I couldn't breathe I woke up and I knew I wasn't breathing and I knew I'd had a nightmare and I got up <laughs> And you've got no balance, you can't see, literally. Like it's, I've walked out to the kitchen and I'm going like this, trying not to run into Nick. And I was just like, wow, this blows my mind that when you get into the advanced stages of recovery, the brain starts going, okay, she's feeling good now, she'll understand, I can let go of all of this particular, you know, shard that's in the amygdala and she can process it. But what happens is it also is actually putting us into trigger mode and all these subtle things happen. So for me, a lot of those things were happening, but they are on such a subtle level that I was dis dismissing them. So what I found was I wasn't sick enough to say, oh, I'm sick, you know, go come up in bed. But I needed to start doing things like taking a multivitamin, which I have on my desk, by the way. So I remember to take it. So I went out and got a women's multivitamin because I knew that there was something internally wrong but couldn't put my finger on it. And it helped. So it takes away all the subtle things. Sometimes I have to take like a cold and flu tablet when I go to bed so that I'm not waking up feeling like it's foggy or that, you know, not just the mouth dryness but it gave me all the sinus symptoms again and things like that and it's been really hard to pinpoint that I was triggered because it didn't feel emotionally overwhelming like I was triggered so I wasn't running around going oh I'm full of anxiety I'm triggered I wasn't like that the overwhelm comes during these stages of change and moving back into connection and it's like because our primitive brain isn't wired in childhood to know how to do these things that I'm doing. So like I've got a business coach. Um, I've been asked to do a, I'm trying to think what you call it, like conference next year, um, asked to do some other work for a hospital in Texas and so on. Now what happens is when all of these things gather together in your mind, it becomes like this overwhelm. And it starts to impact our physical body. So today, I, I've been trying to break it down for us so that we can go, oh my goodness, I can recognise that it's happening. So I went to gym, so I drove to gym, but I sat in the car and I'm like, I feel so good about going into gym, but I can't get out of this car, why not? And as I sat there, I started listing out all the things that my mind was thinking about. All right, so what you want to do when this happens is start making a list of all of the things that you can recognize that you're thinking about. And so for me, it was like, okay, I'm thinking I've got to do a YouTube video. I'm thinking uh, I had to do an Instagram video answers. 
and the list and a list just went on and on and on and on and I went okay so how does this come from overwhelm and that's when I realized that even in our primitive brain like we weren't wired in childhood to see change as something that we automatically go yeah no worries let's go and, up and work out the answer so we literally have to retrain our brain by writing all of these things down and putting them in an order and going okay this is my priority and also writing out how much time it genuinely takes because what happens is our mind can't imagine that it only takes say five minutes to get the washing in it like it's like because we're in this triggered state we're in our imagination and everything seems like it's bigger and longer and going to take longer than it will so we have to be willing to sit down and even if you do a uh, progressive muscle relaxation so that you know you're grounded now it's going to make it easier when you recognize all the different thoughts that you're having about all the different things that you've got to do and how you're going to go about changing your habits around the things that you do as well so for me part of my thought process was oh I must catch up with that person new person in my life I must let them know x y and z and I had to think about it and I went no I don't need to do that because that's not for me to organize they have to organize it okay so it's part and parcel of teaching ourselves how to prioritize what is a priority training our brain to know that how long each thing takes and it's like being an athlete okay so recovery from complex PTSD is like being this athlete where an athlete has to be aware intentionally aware of what they eat their exercise their sleep retraining their mindset to be on fire for you know when they get to that starting block and they've got to launch out so for us with complex PTSD when it comes to the overwhelm we are literally in a stage of going okay I've got to retrain my mind into how to think about these things that I'm thinking about so how to put them in an order how to prioritize them how to not go back down old roads that I used to go down for me where I'd go and do things for everyone and if there's one thing that I can say honestly <laughs> stands out through this whole process this week is I'm going to make a meme out of this it's called I before you and I went it is so it's not just people pleasing it's it's like this really deep level that's ingrained in us that we have to retrain our whole inner self that I have to train my thoughts back to know I've got to do me so I have to be willing to say no I'm sorry I can't do that now I've got to retrain what's happening internally for me at a neurological level and at a bodily level okay <laughs> now I understand that's a lot so just break it down so let's break it down into step by step first thing listen to your thoughts write the list down write the whole list of all the things that you're thinking about next write next to each one how long each would normally take when you're not in triggered mode normally take to do next thing make a priority list just three things on your priority list you can come back and pick three things after you've done the first three and get up and move and do them moving our body is crucial to recovery if you're stuck in overwhelm get up and move even if you walk around the outside of your house the outside of your units the outside of your you know the block around you move your body you've got to do this because it helps get your brain off the freeze and then the last thing we do is go okay <laughs> make sure I'm not doing somebody else's job or you know not make sure that I'm not going to interfere with somebody else's process because I'm used to doing things for other people okay so that's the top five tips to get out of the overwhelm and make it uh, oops, sorry my I'll press the wrong button on the computer <laughs> so go to the latest blog post for the list of overwhelm 
do the top five tips and I'll make a meme for you of the top five tips and stick them stick them on the Facebook somewhere uh, in the newsfeed and we'll go from there. Let me know how you go. Let me know how, if you need any help with it and ask questions and remember to like, share and subscribe so that we get out and help the people around the world who are coming after us and really need this information. Thanks for listening. Thanks, girls. And uh, I will talk to you soon. Bye for now.